start something, we get the information, not to say that we will be able to move forward immediately, but at least the public knows that we're, you know, yeah. taking this seriously. We're getting the, the, the information now. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I have uh, sort of bifurcated thoughts. One is as an attorney for my client, and I'm only uh, here to represent my client. But I also have to take marching orders from my client, and my client happens to be the mayor of the county of Hawaii. And he's told me in no ambiguous terms that he doesn't want me to raise any objection at all to the integrity of your uh, obtaining documents and information that might facilitate the uh, just resolution of the issues before the Board of Ethics. I found this hearing this morning quite interesting, and I appreciate uh, the way it's been handled thus far. I also, uh, I, I would, in, in short, and the short answer is, no, I, by all means, go ahead. And if there's anything improper that either I or my co-counsel uh, uh, believe is being uh, requested, then we'll make the proper objection. But I don't think I would want to raise an impediment at this time. And I know for certain that if I did, that when this uh, hearing is you know, terminated and I walk outside, uh, Billy Kanoi would you know, upbraid me for saying so. He wants the, uh, what's done that's best in the interests of the county of Hawaii and the people of uh, the county of Hawaii. So please go ahead. Mr. DeLima, similarly, I mean, if what you say is true as far as your client, right, maybe there is no issue, but we don't really have anything yet. So well, as far as... I think, I think the bottom line in, with Ms. Sako is she's the finance director, she's a subordinate of the mayor, she was the finance director that released uh, Framework Information Act material after it was requested of her as the finance director. So there is no allegations that would give rise to any further review or involvement of uh, Ms. Sacco. That's our uh, fundamental position. Now, as in terms of records, look, uh, when Attorney General subpoenas records and does an investigation, the records are maintained by the Attorney General. Uh, you're, an, you're an administrative agency, you're subpoenaing records for your review. Uh, I'm not certain if the petitioner is going to be asked to uh, get a copy of those records or will we, we're going to be given a copy of those records. I have no familiarity with the Board of Ethics process when it goes into a full-on hearing. But there is a reason and concept behind the concept of deferring when there is a criminal investigation. This is not something that I'm requesting for the first time in front of this agency. This type of request is made as a fundamental best practice when you're dealing with uh, criminal investigations when there is administrative um, complaint or function by a member of the public. Uh, and the Maui uh, policy addresses it specifically. Mr. Luke pointed out that it was also a reference. It doesn't say shall. There is some discretion. Um, so there's some recognition there should be some balancing here. So I think when you, we, from my client's per perspective, we want a dismissal of the allegations against her because she's not involved, should not have been involved in the allegation, and her, the, the fact that she's the, the finance director at the time that the complaint is being brought doesn't give justification for a continued involvement. I'm a private attorney. I am paid for my time. Um, a member, an employee should not have to engage the services of a private attorney, pay for that attorney when there is really no merit for her being here. So that's why we urge for your dismissal at this time. Just to add about one, one question, I just, and then I'll turn it over to Mr. Evans. Uh, with the petitioner, uh, are you alleging that? I mean, given the time period, what Mr. DeLima has just said, that all of this really involved the former finance director, uh, if, you know, your allegations of, uh, uh, in, uh, would have happened in that time period, uh, I mean, what, what's your comments on that? I mean, is it really fair to, to uh, bring in Ms. Sacco here, who's only been finance director recently? Mr. Hyden? Please turn on your mic, sir. Oh. Sorry, we had sirens. We had to turn it off. Please go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, again, this I, I cover this in my two-page letter to you that I sent to Emily, um, but I, I can I can quickly and easily restate the position. The the finance director is the according to the Hawaii State uh, law the the manual on purchasing cards. The Hawaii County finance director is the purchasing card administrator for the county. And she's responsible for seeing that the P-Card program is properly run. She became finance director on January 7th of 2015. Mr. Kanoi's P-Card was not revoked, which was her immediate responsibility to do. Mr. Kanoi's P-Card was not revoked until the end of March, after the, the information became public through the newspapers. So Ms. Sacco has at least a couple of months' worth of very personal, very authoritative responsibility, and she did not act. So I would say she properly belongs before you, and I'm sorry, it was her choice, and uh, Mr. DeLima will just... Uh, never mind. <laughs> can, I, can I quickly respond please, to that? Please. I think his statement in itself gives rise to some common sense. She's appointed on January 7, 2015. She's uh, in March. Uh, the uh, matter becomes public based on information that she released as the finance director. So uh, I think it speaks for itself. The logic of keeping her in this, involved in this petition is, uh, is there is no real good faith basis for doing so. I urge that you dismiss her at this time. Okay. I'm going to make a motion. Uh, I move that we table the petition. I move uh, pending the criminal investigation that's underway actually pending the completion of the criminal investigation that's underway at the Attorney General's office. Do we have a second? Now, for the purpose of discussion, I'll second that. Any discussion? Is that it? Yes. Uh, I think that in this particular case, I, I, I don't want this to be identified as precedent for this county's board of ethics. I think that we have some other work to do in determining whether or not this becomes a rule that we want to abide by. Understand that other counties are doing this. Um, but in this particular case, uh, uh, I think this makes sense for us uh, to, uh, frankly, I'd rather move forward. But I think that uh, we would uh, potentially be hindering or perhaps causing problems for the other investigation, and, and that I, that's not part of what we should be doing. Uh, even though we're going to be focused on the narrow ethics issue, um, uh, there is the potential for overlap, and, and that would be problematic. So that's why I make that particular um, petition, or particular uh, motion. Um, I do think that we should have the opportunity to ask uh, for information. Uh, I've not yet seen the PCARD rules. I have no idea what they are or anything. Um, and so, you know, the news media gets them, other, everybody else gets them. I have no idea, you know, I can't find them on the internet. They're not in our, you know, the finance department stuff. Um, so, you know, that would be something that I'd be interested in seeing brought to us um, while we are, while we have this particular um, petition table. Um, and there are, you know, a couple of other items that, that are there as well. Um, I hear, um, Mr. DeLima's uh, forceful argument, um, but we have, have yet, if we make this motion, we have yet to, to actually investigate this, actually do any of the hearing associated with this. Um, so I'm not inclined, uh, it, it, we, we have yet to even determine our jurisdiction in this matter. I mean, we haven't even talked about that um, because we were looking at whether or not we should even uh, consider the petition before uh, the criminal investigation is done. Um, so uh, we have yet to get to the merits of the case, frankly. Um, I'm not inclined to dismiss the uh, uh, finance director from this particular position. Any more discussions? Mm -hmm. Madam 
Chair, do I have an opportunity to make a comment? Um, if it, um, if it pertains... Uh, Di directly. Go ahead. that request, aside from uh, you know, fundamental notions of due process, is that as I sat in the back listening to uh, the uh, number of people <laughs> testify, and I appreciated you know, the openness of our democratic, democratic process and the different views that were, uh, you know, were expressed this morning, I also feel that I have uh, come into a forum where I, which I did not expect, because in representing Mayor Kenoy, uh, I've heard a lot of people criticize his use of the P card. I've heard him before he even contacted me as being uh, a member of the team. Uh, you know, really do a major mea culpa and penance uh, before the media, and he will continue to do so. But this morning, uh, aside from some acknowledgement of the good things he's done, a lot of the uh, comments that were pejorative went beyond, I think, the P card. I think uh, when, as indicated, you know, when his family was attacked and, and when other matters that seemed to be irrelevant to the issues at hand and some of the speculation from uh, what went on with respect to the particulars of the uh, misuse, and I will call it misuse, of the P card um, in the sense that, you know, uh, timely disclosures were not uh, made perhaps or uh, payment was not made immediately upon uh, some of the uh, expenditures that basically the court, yeah, that, um, that all the, um, some of the things that were said and made part of the record simply are not true based upon my investigation. And I had to sit down. And I'm not here this morning to address those things. People talk about their own experiences. Uh, I too am a veteran. I mean, in the 60s, I served our country, and you know, I. Okay. But uh, the um, I I was surprised with what I heard, and I uh, strongly disagree with some of the representations made with respect to Mayor Kenoy. I will I will um, say this that uh, if you please uh, in, in, in conducting your investigation as far as you will. Please give us an opportunity, at least, to review what it is that you request, and an opportunity to respond. Thank you. Just, if I might, our, our, our rules do require 20 days. Thank you. Is it uh, thank you. Um, my my uh, client looks like proceeds to be open. Um, but the bottom line, again, is there needs to be a prima facie showing that someone has in other words, you you, um, you shouldn't be proceeding with Ms. Sacco unless there's a prima facie showing that she's involved in some way, somehow. And in other words, you don't do an investigation to determine whether there's evidence just because someone says, I want to name her too because I think somebody should be terminated, which is in essence the petition. There needs to be a basis for it. Uh, I know that you need three votes in order to dismiss because you only have three members right now. Um, but uh, to me, she should be dismissed. She shouldn't have to be entwined in this. But in terms of your specific question, it should be open. Now, in terms of requesting records, to be frank, if you, if you defer, you should be deferring. You shouldn't be doing anything other than deferring. Because as Mr. Luke points out, uh, when, when there is a criminal investigation, the Attorney General issues subpoenas. Subpoenas are make, make specific requests. Now, if we knew what was being subpoenaed, you basically know the thinking of their administrative search uh, in terms of the records that are being requested. Let them do their investigation uh, without interference, without uh, involvement of uh, an administrative agency. Uh, and uh, that's my only suggestion. But in terms of 
my client, she wants it to be open. Uh, she does, she's not asking for any confidential closed proceeding. Thank you, Mr. Dinkler. Mr. Hyland, in regards to releasing uh, any information, could we have your position, please? I am, <clears throat> I am for complete open disclosure, uh, certainly of anything which I produce. Um, and I, I, I would also like to comment that there is a, a clear-cut body of constitutional law uh, called situational immunity. And anything that's discovered in the one hearing, like for instance, as a retired law enforcement officer, I can tell you that when cops are investigated, you can't use any testimony because you can compel testimony. You can't use any of that information in a criminal proceeding. That's well-established law. So you don't really have to worry about that particular conflict. You do have to worry, if you were the Attorney General, about what Mr. DeLima is raising, except the Attorney General says that he doesn't have any problem with it. Thank you. So, so we have a motion to defer the petition pending the Attorney General's investigation, a criminal investigation. And I think we've heard that uh, for the purposes, uh, uh, the question is whether or not there is uh, an additional uh, piece of that that needs to talk about our ability to uh, request uh, information while we have a petition deferred. I I'd be inclined to say that I think we can ask for what we want to ask for underneath the motion already. I think that prevents us from doing that. So. Um, unless there is a desire to amend the current motion, uh, I would suggest we might do it with one. But that's the call. Yeah, um, I, I kind of have a, I'm a little hesitant about doing a concurrent investigation that may interfere in any way with the state. I, I really would like to make sure that, you know, on, on all levels, that all investigations are full and fair and unbiased. And, um, I, I would be inclined to let the criminal investigation uh, run its course um, and uh, depending on the outcome of that then move forward with, with um, whatever we need to do uh, once that part has been determined. Um, so uh, that's kind of where, I, where I'm sitting. Um, if, I, if I could I just ask if there's anything that council has that we can add to what we're talking about. Um, I, I don't have anything to add. Um, however, um, no, I don't, I don't have anything to add at this point. The point of uh, information, and I, I, not to be a stickler, I, I was the county clerk. <coughs> I'm just curious, I, I know, I, uh, I, I think Miss Marks, right, is here, uh, Carrie? Right? Yes. You're, you're filming behind the, in, in the staff area. I mean, just. I think it's normal procedure that that's uh, not allowed. We have to treat all the fr press fairly, and I, I think that always was a rule of the uh, the chamber. Perhaps maybe it'd be best if you went outside. Nobody's ever asked me to not stand back here. Yeah, I, I may be wrong. I just bring that to the staff. And usually, attention. each commission sets its own rules. It's not council rules. Uh, yes. Well, it's the use of the, the council chamber. Right. I cover a lot of commissions in up, here. Would you like me to move out, Kenny? Yeah, I, I think you can tell I can consult with uh, Mr. Yoshimoto, who is the regular uh, uh, attorney. I'd suggest maybe you keep out of the staff area. Thank you. All right, so is there any further discussion in regards to petition number 2015 2 Madam Chair, I think the first thing we need to do is uh, vote on uh, Board Member Adams' uh, motion uh, yes. if the discussions were closed. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for the record, uh, do you want to restate the motion? Yes. I move to defer petition 2015-03 pending the... I think I said completion. I'm not sure that's the correct phrasing, but pending, uh, I'll just, I'll open that a little bit more. Pending the, um, you know another 
Yeah, that's probably good. I mean, the disposition of the Attorney General's uh, criminal investigation. And then we had a second by Mr. Goodwill. Yes. Um, did I call for the vote? All in favor say aye. Um, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So the motion is carried to defer um, petition number 201503. Uh, Mr. Hyden, I would uh, like you to know that you have an opportunity to file a memo in regards to that motion um, if you choose to do so. I, I, I thank you uh, for that, and I certainly will be doing so. Madam Chair, for the sake of clarity of the record, uh, I also take it then that uh, Mr. Bonilla's motion for dismissal is also deferred or is it denied? Uh, okay, I have no comment on that. Even though I feel that it probably warrants dismissal, the, the motion is to defer the whole resolution, and so the whole thing has been deferred. And, and I appreciate Mr. Adams' comments. And even though it seems like there's probably you, you have nothing there, we don't have even a document, you know, some of the representations about providing the information as requested. We really don't have anything. Uh, but it sounds like, uh, you know, Mr. DeLima made some very good points. But the motion was to defer, and that's where we're at, is my feeling. So it's a defer all matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, our next uh, agenda item.